Okay. Um, thank you very much, Alexis. With that, we bring in Daniela Simons, a Jewish student uh, who goes to Columbia. She's a first-year student. Ricky Schlott joins us as well, New York Post columnist and part-time Columbia student who left NYU. Um, so, Daniela, uh, you know, what goes through your mind when you look at the fact that you couldn't go to campus today? And don't you ex isn't there an expectation that the university should be able to provide an environment where no matter what, you can go get the education that you paid for? That is the expectation. And it's shocking what's going on. It's shocking that instead of studying philosophy and political science, I'm here with you today. Yeah. It is, you know, I, I mean, it is, it, uh, the, the, the difference between protesting, which as Americans, we all understand people have a right to protest on campus. But then you hear, Daniela, these students yelling, go back to Poland. And I think about the things that have been called hate speech over the past several years. If this doesn't qualify, I'm not sure what does. This is hate speech. This is the definition of hate speech. And it's crazy to me to, to think that I, I study at an institution that literally produces rocket scientists, yet they, they can't say that this is hate speech. Do you have a security? Uh, is there security on campus? And why can't they provide safe, safe pathways for everyone to go to class? I think there's not enough of them. Um, and even though that they have been increased, it's, yeah. there's, there's mobs. I mean, we're seeing the footage. It's, it's mayhem. It is unbelievable. Um, here's AOC speaking at uh, President Biden's Earth Day event just a short time ago. Watch this. And Ricky, I'll get your thoughts on the other side. Today also serves as a reminder of the power of organizing of what we can accomplish when young people, climate advocates, labor organizers, and working people of all backgrounds come together to demand the future we all deserve. Oh, uh, she also said it's especially important when we remember the power of young people shaping the country today and the leadership of the peaceful student protests on campuses like Columbia, Yale, and Berkeley, and many others, Ricky. What, what do you say to that? And you, you've only been going to a class on Wednesday nights up there, but you're amazed by what you've seen. I was shocked that when I signed up for one class this semester, I've had to go through an NYPD checkpoint almost every single time just to get access to campus and show my ID. But, you know, I'm with AOC if it was just peaceful protesting and just people using their free speech rights, even if I disagree with it. But this is an illegal encampment. They're trespassing in these tents on a private university campus in the middle of the quad saying and screaming incendiary things to the point that students, Jewish students that I speak to on campus say that they certainly don't feel safe, that they feel that their presence, just mere presence, is a protest in and of itself. But on Thursday, I gave the university credit for sweeping these kids out, but they just set up shop directly across the way of the pathway in, in the quad from where they were on Thursday, and they're back. There's more of them. They're bolder, they're screaming, they're getting in people's faces, and they're also stoking protests outside campus gates, which is where we hear really disgusting things like protesters saying, we are Hamas. Yeah, uh, Daniela, was there an effort after October 7th for these sides to speak to each other? Yes. And, and how did that go? How did we get from that to this? After October 7th happened, I... I went around to pretty much every single person I saw wearing a kaffia on campus, and I asked to have a conversation. I invited them to come get coffee with me. And most of them um, said, I'm sorry, I'm not the right person for that. I don't know enough about the conflict. I don't actually, um, I'm just here in solidarity with my Palestinian brothers and sisters, they would say to me, or they would just refer me to Al Jazeera if I wanted more information. I remember one notable time, um, there were a couple of students that were selling kaffias, and so I asked them, like, hey, like, what's, what's the symbolism of the kafia for Palestinian people? Mm -hmm. And they, they had nothing to say to me. They handed me a pamphlet. Yeah. Um, um, it is, it, it's so sad. And it, it, Ricky, you left NYU, and you say that this experience at Columbia has validated why you left this kind of education. Yeah, I, I think I sniffed the rot at the foundation um, at, at, on the institutional level a while ago at NYU, and I felt that there was a problem with radicalization festering under the surface. And I think post-October 7th has really been a wake-up call for people who haven't been on campus, that this is absolutely out of control and that students are such such extremists at this point. Yeah, um, we have to go. But just put those professors up on the wall uh, on our way out here because 
these professors um, teach in the Middle Eastern Studies Department, so they may be the reason why these students don't know the answers to the questions that you asked them, Danielle, because they haven't been taught um, both sides of the story in the Middle East. 1,000%. Yeah. I agree with you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.